Tommy V in Michigan. He was on fire this morning. Hey, thank you, Tommy V in Michigan. Th that, yes, sir. If you, if you share my prayers. Mm -hmm. my Tommy V's on. Yeah, we'll jump over there. Tommy V doing great stuff over there. The record in the matter of David Sheets versus Ramon Pena, phone number 24 1414. What's your name for the record, sir? David Sheets. And your name, sir? Ramon Pena. Okay, today's the date that's up for hearing for non payment of rent. You all uh, discuss this to see if you can resolve it. We're, we're going to try to come up with the money that, that's owed uh, by the first of the time of June, and if not, then we're going to move out. Is that what you want to do? Uh, the bottom line is you haven't paid rent in four months, a total of $5,400 plus the court costs today. Uh, again, I don't want to take his money the first of the month if we've got to go through this again. So I Again, fifty four hundred dollars was needed again? right now. So, what do you mean if you have to go through what again? Come to court and take three months to get here. So, bottom line is, if you can if you can come up with fifty four hundred dollars, yes, if you'll give us the is ten that days. Past, that's your past due amount. Yes. You you, you file a non payment of rent. He pays it before then. The case gets dismissed. Fact, he wants to pay twenty eight hundred dollars. Is what he's saying. So. It's up to you if you want to accept that arrangement. I, I choose, unless there's something saying that uh, within uh, 30 days after that, the balance isn't paid, so I can just use the writ then. I, I, I don't want to go through yeah, all this. You can again. come to a consent judgment saying that. You can enter a conditional dismissal, or you can do a consent judgment either way, um, if that's what you want. And he will agree to make the payment of $2,800 by when? By the time, June. which date? The time. You said the second before. You said first of June. So about okay, well, it will actually be the third. The third. The third. The third of June. The third of June. Yes. And when are you going to pay the balance? The balance will be at uh, thirty days after. Someone was supposed to take them to the private room to complete that paperwork and then you can bring it back. Follow her off the record. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. We also had Brittany Reese. Is Brittany Reese here? Okay. On the record in the matter of South Washington Park versus Brittany Reese, phone number 24 00210. Counsel of Court. Your Honor, Jeff Lewis appearing on behalf of Plaintiff South Washington Park. Your name for the record, please, ma'am. Today's the date and time set for a hearing for non payment of rent. And did the parties come to an agreement at all? Your Honor, um, Ms. Ruiz notified us that she has recently applied at DHS. Um, she needed a couple papers work from us, the ledger and the court date. So she has all that now. So requesting a short adjournment to see if DHS will come out. Um, with the amounts to When did you apply for DHS? Um, I applied last week. The time that I applied last month, I got denied because I didn't um, have anything paid off on my rent. So I paid some of it, and then I'm reapplying. Okay. You have proof that you applied? Um, no, it's my caseworker called me the other day. He told me to submit um, the ledger in my court summons to my DHS, or to put on my migrators account, and then he'll go from there. Can you say this? July 8th. July 8th at 1 30. Thank you, Judge. No problem. Do you have any questions today? No, ma'am. 
Um, sit tight, we'll get you a copy of your notice to appear. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. On the record, in the matter of South Washington Park versus Angelica Sherwood, bar number 24 00211. Council of Yes, uh, Jeff Lugan, we have a plate to South Washington Park. What's your name, ma'am? Angelica Sherwood. Um, yesterday by accident? I did. Uh, I worked third shift, so right. I never really know what day it is. Got it. Okay, today was the date and time that was scheduled for a hearing for non payment of rent. Council, how are you proceeding? Your Honor, uh, we met and we have a execute consent order for conditional dismissal. We discussed the matter and the defendant just stated she wants to move out by June 7th, 2024. So if she moves out by then, the case remains dismissed. That's okay. how you want to resolve this, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you have a couple of rights that you would need to give up in order to move forward with the conditional dismissal. You have the right to be represented by an attorney. You want to give up that right? Yes, ma'am. You have the right to proceed to a trial. You could demand a jury trial. You want to give the right to trial? Yes, ma'am. Anybody threatening you to give up those rights? No, ma'am. Okay, so you are the case dismissed today upon the condition that you vacate the property located at 3200 South Washington Ave, apartment 311, uh, on or before June 7th, and you must turn over the keys, and, you may, and nothing uh, should be left in the property. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. You have three business days from today's date. If once you leave here, you realize you misunderstood any of the rights that you waived, you can return to the court and we'll set it for hearing. Partial performance will not satisfy this agreement, okay? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions for the court? No, ma'am. We'll get you a copy in just a moment. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. On the record in the matter of Steve Davis versus Katibia Haynes and Warren Goff, file number 24 0277. Council of Parents. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I'm Kesky for the plaintiff, and uh, counsel for defendants uh, is finishing up the discussion with his client, and we expect the judicial dismissal to be presented to you here momentarily. Okay. Uh, you said counsel for the defendant? Adam Pozart, legal services. Okay. I don't think I have an appearance in here for some reason. Refer for a few minutes and come back. Uh, I'm sure we'll have that. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. On the record, in the matter of uh, K North Apartments versus Kathleen Powers and Shan Robbins. Um, number 24-02516, Council of Parents. Your Honor, um, Mr. Bellinghouse out in the hallways discussing the uh, possibility of dismissal and signing the office. Just a couple minutes for the finished discussions. So what do you matter are you here for? Um, North versus Collins. Yes, thank you. Sir, what's your, your honor? Honor, uh, Davis versus Haynes. Okay, I called that case. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. We have a conditional dismissal. You can come forward. Again, on the record, in the matter of Steve Davis versus Katia Haynes, you were involved on number 24-00277. Appearances for the record. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. John Kesky for the plan. Your Honor, Adam, because we're here on behalf of Katia Haynes, just standing to my left in the courtroom. Okay. Uh, what's going on with Lauren Bob? That's a co signer, correct? Yes, she was just a co signer, but she did co sign for this last two years. She hadn't co signed, but the first two years she did. She co signed in the originally, and she did, was removed as a co signer. Is that correct? Um, Council? But she, but she hadn't signed. They've been using the same one that we had signed. I'm asking the plaintiff. Uh, oh, okay, never um, mind. I, I, I'm not sure if you're on Perhaps Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson is the co signer. Still valid? Yes. Okay, do you have evidence of that? Honor, 
here I'm looking at the, the lease um, for the co signer uh, signed um, on January 31st, 2020. And uh, the uh, lease was uh, subsequently uh, again renewed uh, with the co signer on September 28, 2022. And since then, uh, this tenant may well have been on the month-to-month uh, -month basis. And so we have no problem uh, dismissing the list of the co-signer here. Oh, so I'll dismiss the co-signer. That co-signer co is... Uh, Lauren Goff. Lauren Goff. Okay. And so your agreement is only as to his. Correct? That's correct. Well... That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. You put the terms on the record. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, in this case, we've agreed that rent is owing in the amount of $2,685 with $500 in other money due. That accounts for a compromise of the amount of late fees and maintenance fees that are owed for a total of $3,185. The defendant is agreeing to pay $100 per month starting June 1st, and that she will participate in any paperwork needed to get uh, her Section 8 started. Again. Okay, Ms. Haynes, that's how you want to proceed on this matter? Yes. Okay, so you had the right to proceed to a trial. You had the right to demand a jury trial. Would you want to give up your right to trial in this matter? Yes. Anybody forcing you to do that? Oh, no. Okay, so you're going to agree to have the case dismissed today upon the condition that you will pay the total amount past due, including court fees, late fees, and maintenance. $3,185, but you'll pay $100 per month starting June 1st. Section 8 to begin paying their portion and back portion after HAP is returned. Partial performance will not satisfy this. Do you understand that? Do you understand what I mean when I say partial performance? Uh, if you don't yeah. pay all. Oh, okay. Here. Yeah. <laughs> You understand what I say? Yes. When I say uh, partial performance. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That means that you may pay all of it, but you may not pay it on the date that you said you was going to pay it. You say you're going to pay $100 per month beginning June 1st. Well, if you pay it on June 2nd, you didn't follow yeah. this agreement, did you? No, I didn't. So you got a partial performance won't satisfy. You need to comply. Otherwise, they can uh, get a motion uh, to reinstate the case and have writ against, issued against you without any further uh, notice to you for a court date. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Do you have any questions? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, three business days from today's date. If once you leave here, uh, you realize you misunderstood the rights that were waived, uh, we will have this matter set for a, a hearing if you come to court and file a motion to set aside that agreement, okay? Okay. We'll get you a copy in just a moment. Okay. Our agreement's already over. Okay. You're all set. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Did they come back in here? Yeah, he had to go to work, but he told me to just mail his copy. But who had to go to work? The defendant. Well, then we have to reset it because they have to go on the record. <laughs> to see if I can catch it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, Mr. Grom. Okay. On the record in the matter of K North Apartments versus Kathleen Powers uh, and Sharon Robbins. File number 24 2516. Council of Parents. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Nicholas Powers, House of Parents, on behalf of the plaintiff, K North Apartments. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Hey, ma'am. Oh. Your name? Chair Roberts. Okay, today was the date that was set for a hearing for a eviction for hazard or property hazard condition. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, at this time, we are moving to dismiss the case. We'll print a dismissal in just a moment. Uh, any objection to that? 
No, Your Honor. Uh, you're also we'll get your copy of the dismissal in just a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> Were you, were you able to catch both or just one? Okay. Just one. Okay. Uh, he's going to have to come back because he has to put that on the record. Yeah. Uh, not Well, you both have to come back because I can't enter this on the record without him. She told him that he could, you were going to mail it to him and he left. I get it, but I but I need to be able to go over his rights. And he left without me going over his rights. I told you all to come back here when you were done. What do you need me to do? Uh, he's got to he's got to get back on our Zoom at some point. I know he's at work today. We can reset it, but our reset date's not that close. So you'd be it'd be in your best interest because you obviously have his contact information uh, to see if he can log in on Zoom tomorrow. He can log in on Friday, his lunch break, whatever, and I can just go over his rights. Over agree. Should we pick a time to do that, or? Uh, well, if you can get him on on the phone and find out if what time his lunch break is or what time he can do it, then we can work around it. Oh God, we'll work on it. It's hard to catch. You never talk. Okay. okay we'll let my what, staff know we're once you do it. Zoom though in the next couple of days. Correct? Yeah, if you can get him on Zoom the next couple of days, we can do it. Let you know ahead of time. Obviously. Correct. Is that correct? Otherwise, you'll have to wait to our next available day, which might be in July. <laughs> Yeah, but I'll be here via Zoom all, We're all, gonna get this Zoom all week. Stuff. Okay, and we'll be all week, only a couple more days left, but if not... Well, I'll be here by Zoom all next week, too. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Hey, I did throwing house. Uh, what happened with oh Miss Pie? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. 18, 18 season rental versus Shanice Hobbs. Uh, council, did you all come to resolution at all? Yes, we do. Y'all uh declined to move to conditional dismiss the case. Okay, we'll get you up. Uh, we'll print out a conditional dismissal for you to complete. Thank you. And let me go over her rights right now before I give you that. Okay, yes. so what can you put the terms of the conditional dismissal? What is she, she gotta pay anything? Yes, the the uh, the defendant agreed to pay the remaining balance by the end of uh, June. What's the remaining balance? It will be two thousand four hundred and fifty seven for the rent and about three hundred for the whole fee. Agree to that, ma'am? Okay, you have the following rights that you will have to give up in order to do that. First is your right to be represented by an attorney. Do you understand that? Yeah. You want to give you your right to have an attorney represent you? You say it with confidence. Yes. Okay. And then you have the right to proceed to trial. You could demand a jury trial in this matter. Did you want to give up your right to jury trial on this? Yes. Anybody threatening you to give up those rights? No. You have three business days after I enter this agreement to return to the court. If you realize you misunderstood the rights that you waived, you can just hand that to the attorney. She's going to complete that request. Uh, if you realize you misunderstood the rights that you waived, you can return request to have this agreement set aside. You must comply completely with what you're agreeing to do, which is to pay the past due amount total that she stated on the record. By which date again? By the end of June. By the end of June. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you don't comply fully by that date and time, she can notice the court and they automatically re-enter the case against you and get a writ to evict you from the property without setting it for a hearing. Okay? Yes. you have any questions? Okay, you all should complete that paperwork and, and then I can review and sign it uh, because I've already gone over her rights. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. I don't think I have anything else until 2.30 unless somebody's ready to go already. Are your 2.30s here? Yeah. Oh, the waiting room. Your Honor, we have a sign to do something that we filed. Is that for Campbell? Yes. yes. They're logging in first. now. Ma'am, what was your name? Chapin. Chapin. Have you spoken with the plaintiff? Is that Mr. Um, Aspel? I don't know who's. This is Freeman. I don't know who's going to be on that. Um, 
Okay, let's see. And have you all been seen already? What's your name? Okay. The mute is and do you have an attorney? Okay. Uh, Ms. Hall and Ms. Campbell? Yes, you're yes. on. Okay. On the record, in the matter of George Selly versus Vanessa Campbell, file number 24 01261. Council appearance, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. John Kasky for the plaintiff. And Alyssa Hall of Legal Services of South Central Michigan for Defendant Campbell. Okay, today was the date and the time that was set for a hearing for non payment of rent. My understanding is that the parties did enter into a conditional dismissal agreement. Is that correct? Correct, Your Honor. That's correct. Uh, can the, very good. Can one of the attorneys place the terms on the record? Uh, the uh, conditional dismissal order provides for rents of $7,475, court costs of $159.66, other money due of $500 for a total of $8,134.66, and court costs of $8,134.66. The conditions are that the defendant shall pay $2,000 before June 3rd at 3 p.m., and an additional $2,000 honor before 3 p.m. on the 15th of each month for the total owed until the account is current. And defendants will continue to pay the monthly rental obligations $1,495 honor before 3 p.m. on the first of each month. Um, for, uh, and, and that this, these payments should be made in certified funds, Your Honor. I have an original copy of the signed document, which we filed on my file this morning, but I have one here if you would like to review the hard copy. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hall, is that completely accurate as to the agreement that is executed? That is, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Campbell, that's your understanding of how you're going to move forward? Yeah. Okay, so it says cash to rent in the amount of $7,475 for court costs of $159.66. Other money due $500. What's the other money due for? The other that's money a, is... Uh, go ahead. I was going to say that's a negotiated amount of late fees. Okay, uh, so other money due for late fees plus a total grant well equals a grand total of eight thousand one hundred and thirty four dollars and sixty six cents. Ma'am, uh, you are agreeing to pay two thousand dollars on or before June third by three p.m. You shall pay an additional two thousand dollars on or before three p.m. on the fifteenth of each month for the total listed in two D until the account um, becomes current. During this time, the defendant shall continue to pay her monthly rental obligation of $1,495 on or before 3 p.m. on the first of each month. If the first or 15th of the month falls on a weekend or holiday, payment is due by 3 p.m. on the following business day. Payment shall be made by certified funds. Partial performance will not satisfy this agreement. Do you understand that, Ms. Campbell? Yes, I do. Okay, you really need to give up your right to have a trial in this matter in order to enter into this resolution of conditional dismissal? I don't need one. Are you willing to give up your trial in order to enter this conditional dismissal? Yes. Okay, anybody threatening you to do that? No. Okay, you have three business days from today. You can get that back to uh, Council Kesky. Uh, three business days from today. If after you leave here, you realize you misunderstood the rights that you just waived, you can return to the court and have this set aside, okay? Yes. Uh, any additional matters for the record today, Council? Uh, no, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Thank you. You're all set. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> And then, Mr. Kesky, did you meet with uh, Bermudez and Black yet? Uh, we have 
negotiated, I believe, a conditional dismissal, but I don't know whether the appendix are here. They're right there. Over here. Toby's and Okay, Bermudez. Uh, and who was the other lap? Yep. Who are you? She's my mom. I'm um, Cynthia Belvin. Okay, well, you're, but you're a Bermuda's, correct? Yeah. Okay. And you said Black is in custody? Are you are you, are you doing a conditional dismissal uh, for yes. Bermuda's? What are you gonna what are you doing with Black? How long has Black been in custody? Uh February 20th. He was sentenced four years later for something in 2009. No, I get that, but I think it uh, I don't know that we were notified that he was in custody because we wouldn't ready. The last court day I mentioned he's an MBOC. She said he was sentenced. He said this to four years? No, I said he was sentenced four years later. Like oh, the case okay. was in 2019. He's not in Ingham County. Where is he? He's in boot camp now. Or he'll be out about like August 14th. Okay. I'm not able to default him because he's in custody. So I don't know what you want to do with him. Well, uh, if the conditional dismissal with Ms. Bermudez holds up, sort of move it out so we can simply try to defer that and to see if we got performance on a conditional dismissal now. Okay, so we set black maybe as to he's gonna be in boot camp until August, you said we set him out and then see if this works out. Um, that's correct or not. Okay. Uh, Ma'am you can come up the uh, the conditional dismissal payment period ends on August 31st so it's you said something on September. Okay. We, we would know whether, whether it's moved and we can send in the dismissal as to you know, if this works. Sounds good. Can you put the jump in the record? The end of the uh, consent order for conditional dismissal, um, parties have agreed that the uh, defendants um, would pay $1,025 on or by May 30th for June rent. $900 on or by June 13th, applied to our back rent, $1,025 for July rent on or by 6-27-2024, then a $900 payment on July 11th for back rent, $1,025 for August rent on or by July 25, then a $575 payment on or by August 8th for back rent. And the plaintiff will waive late fees for June August, June to August if the payments are timely, with the payments to be in certified funds. And I have a copy of that here. Uh, the one great Listen, it's 235. Like, we well, were killing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you running on time? Or? I mean, we were ahead of time. Well, that's helpful for everything. Let me uh, present, present this to you, I mean, Your Honor. Okay, so I have an agreement here, and you want to waive your right to be represented by an attorney to enter into this agreement? And you also want to give up your right to a trial, including demanding a jury trial? I can't hear you. Yes. Okay, so you're agreeing that the matter can be dismissed today under the conditions that you will pay the past due rent due through the time period of August 31st, 2024, $5,260.32 court costs $189.68 total, $5,450 that you'll make uh, payment in total as follows, $1,025 on or before the 30th of May for June rent, $900 or on or before June 13, 2024, and $1,025 for July rent on or before June 27th, $900 on or before July 11th, uh, $1,025 for August rent on or before uh, July 25th, and then $575 on or before August 8th. Plaintiff will waive late fees for June and August if the above payments are timely. 
All payments must be in certified funds and partial performance won't satisfy this. Do you understand that? So you must follow this section right here to a T. Otherwise, they have the right to come to the court and request for this judgment to enter against you immediately and have you removed from the property. Do you understand that? Do you have any questions? If you misunderstood any of the rights that you waived, today you can return to the court within three business days, have this matter set for a hearing, and you can explain how you misunderstood your rights, okay? Do you have any questions at this time? We'll get you a copy of your dismissal in just a moment. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Your Honor, do you want us to file that on my file? Or would you that? No, we'll just file it. I signed it, I think, just now, so we'll sign. We'll file it. Uh, Ms. Pye? Yes. And Mr. Asphalt, how are you? Good, Your Honor. How are you? Good. You're on the Cedar Place matter? I am. Ms. Shapton is back there. You met with her already? Oh, okay. Let me go talk to her. See why she's here. You want a copy of that? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Five four. That's Mr. Lum. Mr. Lum here. Mr. Lum. Uh, looks like uh, your a defendant is running late. Let's see. Well, car trouble. Didn't give any time frame for how long they're going to be late. Did give your number. The clerk's office gave your number to see if they can reach out to you to get a. Uh, agreement on how you want to work out so you might want to check your phone <laughs> but they didn't give a time frame so they're going to get the standard 10-15 minutes oh, you're good. <laughs> well, thank you <laughs> your honor we did send a missile in for another piece which I, on my file I don't know what you so which one William Law versus Bozeman, case 24, 41263. Okay, it's probably in there. I don't. I haven't seen it yet, but it's probably in there. It's on there? Yeah, okay. that's dismissed. Yep, that one's in there. And then we're just, so we're just waiting for Jocelyn Murchison? Merch that's correct, John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we're ready, Judge. And you were here on this part. On the record in the matter of Cedar Place Apartments versus Shannon Chapman, file number 24 1187. Yes, Christopher Asphalt, 53129, on behalf of the plaintiff. Okay, say your name for the record, ma'am. Shannon Chapman. Okay, Ms. Chapman, today was the date set for a hearing on an eviction for non payment of rent. Uh, Mr. Asphalt, how are you proceeding? Uh, Your Honor, I spoke with the defendant at length uh, regarding the situation. And she's aware of our position, but she is not in agreement to enter into a consent judgment at this time. Okay. Uh, you think you have a legal reason why you should hold their property and not pay rent? Well, well I want to pay rent. Um, yeah, but there's past due rent. So do you have a, yes. a, a, um, a legal I, defense? Yes. I, I, I hope so. <laughs> Our lease changed. Um, they have a, a form of me signing a new lease agreement, which I was not aware of. I When I signed a form in July, I thought it was a $10 discount for my July rent, and it's in my lease ledger. Um, I, they had a, another manager at that time, um, and she's gone, and I don't know what happened. But I didn't get notified until December that um, my rent was increased $300. No changes were made as far as I'm, you know, there was no reason for $300 increase that I was aware of. And I wasn't even aware that we had signed into a lease agreement. You know, my signature is on that page. Okay, so. And um, 
as soon as I or you learned of the you were paying the other amount, just not yeah. the increased three hundred. Yeah. You're saying and as soon as I knew of the three hundred, mm-hmm. I am automatically started paying it. No problem. Still not knowing why. Also, that my rent went up, and now I got all these fees and fines, and I don't have anywhere to go. I'm a good tenant, and I love it there. Um, so you want a hearing? Yeah, Mr. Asphalt. Uh, Your Honor, just briefly, uh, the, the defendant referred to it, and she is correct. She she signed a lease amendment that clearly indicated that beginning July first, twenty twenty four, uh, her rent was going to be fi- her the portion of her rent was going to be five hundred fifty three dollars, and the assistance the anticipated assistance payment was going to be three hundred forty seven dollars. She signed it on June 28th, 2023. So I don't, re- and she also received this notice, I believe from HUD also dated June 28th. And she signed that as well, also confirming these amounts. Okay, so this is subsidized housing? I think that's accurate, yes. HUD's involved. Well, is that accurate? Yes. If that's all HUD does, subsidized <laughs> housing. Okay, so subsidized housing, and her rent is based on her income? I believe that is accurate, yes. So your income changed, ma'am? Your income did not change? When you certified, you were sure that your income didn't change? Yes. Hmm. Nothing changed from the first lease to the second lease. With your income? With okay. And okay. Everything was same first lease. So you're not sure why your rent went up? Right. Do you have information that could support, explain to her why her rent changed? Uh, can we bring my property manager up? Uh, you can show her. I don't really want to see it. I just want her to see it. Right. I'm not actually on the record for a hearing right now. I understand. Yeah. I mean, if, if the court wants, we could ask her these questions. I understand that's not a formal hearing, but right. she, she may have some light to shed on it for the defendant. We haven't got to go over anything. Well, I'm she, sorry, you did what? We haven't got to go over any of that. Right. Why well, I think she wants to see why her rent went up. Maybe if she could see that, she would not have a dispute. Right. And I mean, she knows that it's not our decision to raise her rent or Agreed. to not raise it's her rent. But government, it's HUD. Right. So that's why I say maybe if she could see what happened, that she will not be. And then have you applied for any assistance to help? Yes. Let's say they do have some evidence that shows you, um, during recertification, uh, your rent went up for whatever reason and you got to pay this. Have you applied for assistance? Yes. Um, DHS said they would help me with 410. When did they tell you that? Um, uh, eight. I think it expired on the eight. I have to reapply for it again if I'm going to do it, but I'd have to come up with the remainder and I'm not sure where that goes yet. Okay. So if that expired, I'd have to go through the whole steps again. <laughs> okay. What's your name? Tammy Prop Center. Okay, you're going to help her understand how her sure. rent went up? Sure. Okay, rent is based on income in your unit. 30% of your income is how the rent's determined. You and your roommate have income from Social Security. So that's what your rent's based on. Yes. And it was the 30%. same the same from the first lease to no. the second. No, no, what happened? No. You, you have income that you didn't report? No. And they caught that? That's what, what no, that's when it's no, on the email. No, it's not. That's their that's, position, is what she's know, saying. No, because that was from the summer before, and that was three hundred dollars in some odd sense. And I was working on paying that up, and that was already done. I had nothing to do with with the right. Uh, no. We have a compliance department that I send all the information to, and they are the ones that get the information. They they send the information to HUD for calculation. Do you have that information that was sent to HUD for calculation? Um, I would have to get it out of her file. I didn't bring it with me today. Okay, well, we need that to be brought in because she's disputing that her rent was calculated properly. And this okay. is rent, her portion of the rent because you said something about a roommate. Yeah, she's got a second person that lives with her and he gets income as well. Yeah. Okay, but only she's on this eviction. Right. With, where's the other person? It's on um, Cortez, I believe. Is there, is there <laughs> income calculated in this amount? I believe so. So why aren't they here today? I don't know, Judge. Did you evict them or name them in the eviction? I don't believe we did. I don't want any problems either, guys. Well, Your Honor, I guess why don't we adjourn this and I will... Do I have your contact information? Okay, I know. I'll get you a new date and see if you all can work this out because it sounds messy. Yeah. Do you want to give me the date right now or will we just... We'll give it to you. Okay.
It'll be July 8th. July 8th. At 2. At 2. At 2 p.m. And if you did file uh, with DHS, you need to bring us proof of that, and we'll put that in your file. I that okay. last time, too. Yes. Uh, okay. okay. Sounds good. At 2 p.m. Okay. And then we'll see you then. Thank you, Judge. We'll get you a copy of your notice, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.